My name is Vincent Caprini, and I'm uh, third generation uh, grower of walnuts and cherries out here. My grandfather immigrated from Italy and uh, come to America and found this uh, land here. And they lived on the river here, so they'd come down and help themselves to fish when they wanted some. We got pictures of some fish up there that big come out of this river. And there's still fish that big in the river today. It's not what you think of as a wild and scenic river. Calaveras is, uh, is as blue collar as this city is, is as blue collar as the valley is here. It's a working river. It's, uh, it's a river for agriculture water. It's a river for drinking water. Why do I need to go to the Yellowstone or one of those other places? We got a river right here. What can we do to make this river our river? It's been dammed, it's been diverted. There is no habitat left for fish to spawn or rear in the Lower Calaveras. At this point, it's basically just a means to get to the end. And the end is the beautiful river where we're standing now. It's highly productive, has good cold water, and can produce salmon and steelhead in large numbers, even though it's a very small and humble system. This upper system of the river is about as productive a stretch of stream as we know of in the Lower Central Valley. It, it's far from a dead river. It's actually quite the opposite. There's, our job now, I think, is to try to work with people and the changes we've made to the river to find areas where we can fix those problems, where fish can coexist and thrive. We start by showing people a map that's less than 30 miles of river with upwards of 100 barriers in it. And 100 seems like a huge number, but we're never going to make that number get any smaller without starting with number one. Well, my grandfather built that bridge down there, uh, I want to say 50 years ago, maybe 60. The salmon would try to get up over the bridge and to sit and watch them try over and over again. It's just incredible. And a little sad because you knew that they weren't going to make it up to spawn, which is why they were here. I think the landowner's concerns were that there was going to be a large-scale construction project with big equipment right in their backyard. And they didn't necessarily know that we were going to be able to incorporate their needs for their agricultural operations. Construction at the Caprini site consisted of large excavators going in and breaking up the old concrete and all the material that was there. After all that was cleared out, six large concrete box culverts that were about 10 foot by 12 foot each were swung into place and laid in two rows of three. Then some big concrete wing walls were built off that back into the sides of the river to make sure that that bridge was tied in place. And a new channel was built with engineered rock of specific sizes that would mimic a natural riverbed through the site for fish. The new bridge with the big sections, they'll be able to swim right through it. It makes it so my husband Vince can get over to the other side of the ranch when he needs to. And it's just, it's a very nice bridge all the way around it. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service were great to work with. The biggest challenge, I think, in this watershed for many, many years was for folks to be able to put their arms around the problems, to not be so intimidated that the pie they were looking at was so large they couldn't imagine the size of the piece that they could start with. This partnership, I think, has spanned every level, from a federal agency to several state agencies to a local water district, all the way down to the private owners of the Caprini Crossing. The Department of Water Resources relationship with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is very strong. It was fostered working on this project. We need more projects like this in California. Our relationship with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been very much a give and take, coming together financially as well as, as effort-wise and figuring out how to get those projects done. The big vision for the Calaveras River in my mind is not only to do these individual projects, return fish to the system, allow them ease of passage, but to reconnect the people of Stockton and the Calaveras River watershed with their local river. Opening up Caprini, uh, it, it both opens up the watershed to anadromous fish, but it's also opening up the message of the restoration to the upper reach of the river. Can you hear the peacefulness of this river? Sometimes you can hear a red-tailed hawk, or the crows, or other birds.
Isn't it beautiful? It deserves to be taken care of.